So you guys have your options when you're going to clean these joist pockets out. Um, you can use a router, you can use a circular saw, you can chisel it out, you can drill it out and then chisel it out. Um, I like the circular saw method myself. I kerf it out fine. Um, I probably make my kerfs a lot finer than I need to, a lot finer than I see most people who do this. And that's mostly for me, I found it easier to, uh, I just found it a lot easier for myself to do that, easier for material removal. It does take more time kerfing it that many times, but it saves me a lot more handwork with the chisel. So I've tried the router on these and I've done this method. And to be honest with you, I've had better results with this method over the router as long as your chisel is good and sharp. If the chisel is good and sharp, it, it just saves you so much time. So we're going to kerf these out all the way down the line. I've got to do my, uh, my cuts for the, uh, for the tenon on here that goes into the wall post before we roll this over. And that's the other thing that, uh, that's the other, other little thing to make your work a little bit easier. And what I try to do, I'm not, I don't always do it, but I, if I have to make a series of cuts on one side of a beam this big, try to make them all before you roll the beam over. You just, these things are heavy and chances are if you're like me you're going to be rolling these with brute strength and ignorance you know so just if you can if it's possible make all the cuts you have to make on one side of this beam before you roll it over before you adjust it so we're going to cut this out i'm going to rough these out and uh we'll go with it now when i'm cutting these out to me, the joist pockets, I mean, you should be fussy with all of it, but to me, the joist pockets aren't as uh, critical, but I'm worried more about the depth of them. I'm not too worried if there's an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch gap on this side or that side. That doesn't bother me. I mean, once you screw the flooring down to it or however you're attaching it, and it's resting against here, it's not... I could be wrong, and if uh, any of you guys who do this for a living or for a regular basis, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't worry as much about the joist pockets as I do the rest of it. I mean, I, I still try to put the same quality into it, try to make them tight, but I don't leave the line when I'm cutting out the, the width of this thing. I just I skim the edge of the line, line's gone, but when I get down to the bottom of the pocket, that's where I take a lot more time. And that, like I said, that's to make sure that the joists are flush with the top of this tie beam. That way we don't have flooring heaving on us. So that's just how I do it. You guys do it however you want. Boy, am I glad this is the last tie beam. Much as I enjoy doing it, I am just glad this is the last one to cut anyway. I still got to put them up, but the other ones are all cut and notched. I tried to tell my wife that the smell of sawdust is an aphrodisiac. She, uh, she doesn't believe me yet. Apparently it doesn't work for her, I guess. Last one, on this side anyway. Alright guys, we got it all curved out now. So we can start, uh, start a little chisel work here. Um, Really not much to this, I just clean up what I can, 
knock as much of the meat out as I can. And then I, uh, now on these two, I probably, I go against convention a little bit to where, and I couldn't, I probably couldn't really get away with it on the other joints, but on these, like I said, they're going to be where they're going to be. It's not, to me, it's not as big a deal. They're, they're in there, they're not coming out. It's not going to make the barn fall down or anything like that. But I set my saw right to the two inch depth that I want these pockets with just about all of your joints though, you're gonna to wanna to leave those saw, that saw curve off of that line a little bit so you have room to take care of any imperfections you have. But um, I don't on these, and it kinda of gives me a uh, nice line to pare down to. I mean, there's some things, some things you wanna be very fussy on when you're doing this stuff, and there's other things that you can get away with, you know, uh, or you don't have to be quite so fussy. And this is this is one of them, at least in my experience. It cleans up real quick and easy, especially when you have uh, when you curve out real fine cleans up real easy. I don't reef on the chisel real hard when I'm knocking these out. I just real light with it. You don't want to break your chisel. I mean, hopefully you wouldn't come close to breaking it, but uh, why take the chance, you know? Now here's where you can run into a little bit of trouble when you're cleaning these out that I found. If you're going in like this, now I'll clean up whatever shallow just like that, just like I said when we were cutting the scarf joint. But when I get in here where I get more material, I'm gonna flip it up so that I, as I chisel in, the chisel wants to ride up a little bit other rather than ride down. I know I keep saying that, but that's kind of one of those things that's pretty important. I don't want you to forget it because otherwise you're gonna you're going to take out too much material. Sometimes I found that pine isn't as crisp to work with as like your hardwood, your oak, stuff like that. I'm just talking in a general woodworking sense. Um, I find it a little bit easier to chop across the end, end grains of a hardwood. The pine wants to tend to crush a little bit when you're chopping into it across a grain. I've also found I much prefer working with green timber over dry stuff. It just seems to be easier to tool. Now this last part is where it's real easy to get off. Is it you have a tendency to want to dive back in on the bottom of your joint. This is the part of the joint that I'm real concerned with. This is the part that I want really good. I want this good and square. And this is going to be all your bearing surface. You get it out of square one way or the other. You're going to be crushing down you're not evenly loaded on the joint. So the part that's bearing all the weight is going to crush down. Your, your, uh, your joists are going to sink in a little bit. Could only be a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch, but it's enough to be a pain. I just like I said earlier, little bites. You don't need uh, you don't need to get the joint done all at once.
And as you go, you keep shearing that end grain as best you can. And then once you get that down where you have less material, then you can go in flat with your chisel and just kind of work it by hand. I don't like to, uh, I won't run the mallet much through there when I'm doing that. Just by hand, just smooth the bottom of it out. And then once you start getting more resistance to where you have to pound, come back, shear your end grain again. Now make sure too, when you're doing this, watch where your chisel's going down on this side against here. Your more modern chisels are going to be a little more flat along the back. Some of your older ones are going to be angled just a little bit. But these, the newer ones I find, are they're pretty flat. So it gives you a good straight edge that you'll be able to see if you're watching. You'll be able to see if you're tipping one way or the other. So you want to keep an eye on that. Use the back of this chisel as a, a good reference point for keeping your, uh, when you're shearing across those end grains, or any time really, where you need to make sure you're flat. You know, when you start, once you do this, you do a few of these and you do a little bit more joinery, you really start to get a feel for a lot of this stuff. At first, you know, you're kind of flying blind like I was, and especially if you're trying to teach yourself. So there's going to be a lot of little things you're going to pick up along the way that uh, you may not have otherwise picked up. That made a lot of sense, didn't it? Mm, that just tore out on me. That tore out a little bit past my line right there. It's no good. All right, well, I'm going to go through. I've got uh, five more on this side to do, eight more on the other side, and I'll shut the camera off here, and we'll roll again when uh, I'm getting ready to cut the uh, tendon off the end of this tie beam.